Hey there everybody, uh, it's Frank again, back with another tutorial. This time I'm going to show you something similar to the last one, another way we can design pages in the print gallery. Um, in this particular one we've got, uh, I've got several images from the Dia de los Muertos event that we shot over at Live Oak Memorial Park and if you decided that you had a bunch of images, uh, last time we designed basically what could be an album page or a poster. This time this could be a flyer for someone. Uh, maybe it could be uh, some uh, some kind of collateral for your own personal website uh, or your own personal photography business. But uh, what we're going to do here is I've got my I've got my collection of selects here. I'm going to go into the print gallery, the print module, I should say, and we're going to um, create a new pa a new page and this time we're going to do um, uh, a custom package we're going to add some cells to it we're going to um, change background color and things like that uh, one of the first things I wanted to show you is when you come into Lightroom, one of the default cell packages is this 2 by 2.5. Since I want to keep everything here in the same ratio as my camera has been as my uh, camera shoots, I'm going to go ahead and change this. And if you want to change it, one of the things you can do is click on the drop down box, click on edit, and now you can design your own. As you can see, I've already added uh, a 2 by 3, which would keep this uh, relative to the to the way my camera shoots. So uh, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to add that. That changed the one from 2 by 2.5 to 2 by 3. And uh, now this one will it'll always default here. We're going to go ahead and click on the lock to photo aspect ratio because I'm going to keep everything in that ratio. And I'm just going to start off with adding a bunch of uh, cells. We're going to resize them in a little bit. So let's start off with, I don't know, maybe We'll start off with six cells, see how far we get with these. Uh, a couple of things I'm going to do real quick is uh, we're going to kind of put together like a little puzzle piece here. Uh, I'm going to take this first cell. I want to flip this vertical, so just click on the rotate cell. It rotates it vertically. I'm going to leave a, a little edge on both sides here. Drag this out a little bit. Let's see. Um, I might have to change this up a little bit but that's okay. I'm going to grab this cell here, rotate cell. I'm going to drag this one out right there. Yeah, let's see. I'll make this one a little bit smaller. Maybe something like that. I want to get everything to fit in here just like a puzzle piece. this one out something like so the nice thing is that when I put something right up here I can cover up with that one and we'll add uh, let's see get away with three more. If you're having a hard time resizing them, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier if they're not touching any outside edges.
something just like that. That looks like that would work. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to change the background color. I want to make that all black. Uh, it already defaulted to black for me, but if it doesn't default to black for you, once you click the page background color checkbox, click on the uh, color picker, grab whichever color you'd like to use. In this case, we're going to use the black. Again, what you see here is you see uh, a white. These are your cell indicators. These will not print. Um, they just show you where the cell boxes are so that you can so you know where to drop your images in. Uh, but in this case, we are going to add an inner stroke to them when we're done. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, we, all we need to do is grab our images and drop them, drag and drop. And again, these were all shot at the uh, Live Oak Memorial Park Dia de los Muertos event on uh, Tuesday night. Because we kept the lock to photo aspect ratio box checked. These are all going to fit in here real nicely. We don't have to do any moving around or resizing. Oh, it looks like I used the same picture twice. I'll just go ahead and do that. Instead, go something like that. child getting their face Maybe something just like that okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this image and I'm going to right click and I'm going to send this one forward send to front and now that's going to cover up that image uh, or you could go vice versa right click send to front and that one will cover up that one now we're going to go ahead and add our inner stroke maybe something like so again you can click on here use the color picker change this to any color you'd like we'll go with white for now uh, we're going to click on the identity plate in this particular instance, I'll show you how I did this. Uh, this would be the default identity plate, the same one that you've got up here in the corner, uh, that will default here. But let's say you wanted to use something uh, with a little bit more text, uh, or uh, a little bit more text, you wanted to wrap around a line. The um, identity plate doesn't give you a whole lot of options to do things like that. So what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to wind up using our text editor. Any simple text editor will work. We're going to go ahead and type in what we want to uh, show here. We're going to go ahead and copy and paste that. Make sure it's centered. Copy and paste. And now we can bring this into our identity plate. Click on Edit. Paste. And there it is. Now we just have to decide what kind of font we want to use. In this particular case, I want to go for something that um, kind of resembling maybe Spanish heritage or, or something looks a little bit more Dia de los Muertos -y. and in this particular case uh, I think that Harrington will probably work well I'm going to select it all change it to Harrington click OK now once it's in here you can use the scale slider once you position it where you want it you can use the scale slider move it around if you need to and there you go 
uh, if it comes up black and you can't see the text again you click on the override color click on the color picker and choose your color once that's done you can obviously now opt to print this and send it to the printer I wouldn't recommend doing too many things that were completely black with black backgrounds and sending those to your printer but uh, in this particular case we can send it to a JPEG file file resolution 300 ppi and go ahead and print to file that'll send it off as a JPEG image save it in whatever you would like to save it in give it a name click save and we're done okay guys I hope you find this helpful uh, one more thing that you can do with your images inside Lightroom uh, again this could have been uh, collateral for your website or for some printed materials maybe you're going to make some 4x6 cards to pass out maybe you're going to make a poster to hang maybe you've got a gallery showing coming up and you want to uh, post some images from the gallery showing put some details down here about the gallery showing uh, this could work for multiple uses so I hope you guys enjoy this have a good night bye